Hi everyone, Armoured Pants here and I have another review for you. This is the Germaline, the Tier 9 Heavy, the uh, KPF PZ70 or the Kampf Panzer 70. Uh, it's currently in the shops right now. Uh, it's relatively good value at 16.99. Just look at the price here, 16.99 euro on the, on the EU server. It's about $20, whatever like that on the US server. And it's not bad for Tier 9 when you consider that uh, uh, Wargaming has launched tier 9s for 60, 70, sometimes even 80 euros. And we'll have a look at the tech spec. Uh, we will use blitzhanger.com for that. Um, but before that, I want to take a little time out and I want to talk to you a little bit about game philosophy. Um, those of you who watched the K91 review will uh, see this as being familiar. Uh, but obviously, I need to make all of the reviews as standalone. So I do apologize if I'm repeating myself to those of you who have watched um, the K91. But let's talk about game philosophy, right? So, you know, as you go up through the tiers and the number of games you've played, there's sort of a line which increases with your experience, which is a red line here, kind of dictating where you should play, right? So basically, the more games you play, the more experience you get, um, the easier it is for you to play in the higher tiers, right? It's basic um, sort of skill acquisition uh, matrix, right? This isn't uh, any particular player, it's just a general representation. Some players um, are better than others, some players learn quicker than others. So this is just a general representation. And if we take a specific example, right, this could be when you're playing tier 5, right? So you've played a finite number of games, let's say maybe, you know, 2000, and you should be playing comfortably then at tier 5, right? So this is a pretty simple example, or it could be tier 4, it doesn't really matter, it's just illustrative, right? Um, but um, let's just take then, let's say that was tier 5, we take a second example here, we intersect, right, and let's say that's tier 9, right, and you can see the gap there between the games you've played and the games you need to play to be comfortable at tier 9, right, so skill set increases, skill set gets better, um, however, the difference in the tiers that you should be playing versus where you want to play Let's say, so let's say for example of tier 5 versus tier 9. There's a huge gap, a huge delta there in the number of games that you should play or that you need to play to gain this experience. And this is highlighted here with this red circle. Um, and this is your danger zone. Because if you um, go too far up the tiers too quickly, you enter into a danger zone where you have um, a level of play at which you're not ready to play yet. And this could be a danger zone or there's a potential area of failure. And that basically means that if you advance too quickly, you play in this area of potential failure. And it means you're going to lose more. You're not going to enjoy the game. You're not going to learn as quickly because you're losing and going out of games very quickly. Um, you're going to be uh, frustrated and you're going to frustrate your teammates. And as we know in Blitz, that's going to open you up to a bit of toxic abuse. So it's not really fun for anybody, right? It's not fun for you, and it's not fun for your teammates. Um, it's maybe only fun for the people you're playing against. And effectively what you're doing there, because you can only do that by buying a premium tag, right? So effectively what you're doing there is you're paying to lose. You're paying money to Wargaming to advance too quickly, and you're losing more than you should. It's no fun, you won't enjoy it, and nobody will. No, neither will any of your teammates. As I said, probably only the Reds you're playing against are going to enjoy that. So that said, let's have a look at the tech spec. And I mean, the basic lesson here, guys, is to, you know, be careful about buying a tier 9 tank if you're not ready for it. Um, simple lesson, right? So let's have a look at the tech spec. I mean, this tank overall, it's not like the K91. This is a poor tank. It is a premium tank. It has 140% credit coefficient, which makes it number 2 in tier 9, but that's still relatively low compared to other tanks. Um, in terms of um, provisions, I would run chocolate, chocolate barn, and pr proved fuel. It maximizes this tank's combat abilities, which are limited. I have to say, and we will have a look at why that is. You need to run calibrated shells, a supercharge, and refined gun to max out the handling and the pen on this tank because the gun handling is bloody awful. It's horrendous. Horrendous, guys. Now, it has a 152mm gun, right? So you think, wow, like derp gun, right? But it has weak pen. It has weak pen numbers for such a big gun. And this is a massive problem. You get 252mm of pen with APCR, which is your um, standard round, 336mm with heat, and you get 99mm of pen with, a, with HE, which makes HE a very viable option. Um, you get, But, you know, there's a 15.74 second reload. I mean, it's almost as long as the entire magazine on the K91, 
and even if it gives that uh, gives you 560 to 700 damage points per round it's still really poor dpm the other thing is those pen numbers are less than the k91 which has a hundred millimeter gun it doesn't make any sense muzzle velocity in, and it is low as well it's 1196 meters per second with apcr even with supercharge all rounds are the same but it has dreadful gun handling this thing has dreadful gun handling its g index is around 12,000, which is the same as a vk2801 at tier 6 so if you tier 6 gun handling on a tier 9 premium tank doesn't make any sense six degrees of gun depression 15 degrees of elevation gun alignment is kind of right okay just okay that's it nothing special it does 40 kilometers per hour right so it's fast and it does 15 in reverse and it has a great power to weight ratio for a heavy and good reverse so you're kind of thinking okay maybe i can play it as a hevium well you can't really and we're going to discuss why you can't play it as a he hevium and you know when you look at the armor pro profile here you can begin to see one of the reasons why right has really really poor armor profile on the on the hull of the tank so the hull of the tank is not really a heavy it's not really a heavy tank profile at all at the back you're really vulnerable you can get he'd and heshed by almost every big gun well actually by every big gun not almost every big gun that there is in tier 8 9 and 10 where you're going to be playing so just overall this tank kind of it the problem it has is that it's not anything you can see here that it has a really really strong turret so you're kind of thinking okay well you know like the t34 t32 t29 i'm gonna go hold down okay you can and it is effective a hold down but it doesn't have um the gun depression for that or at least it doesn't have the gun depression to utilize that um to the maximum and this is basically the problem. Maybe it's due to its, its, its history that it's a kind of an amalgamation a tank between the Germans and the Americans. And maybe that's why it didn't work out. Maybe that's why it never really went into production. And um, the major problem with this tank, guys, is to, and if you look at the tactics here, is that it's not anything. It's not a heavy, per se, in a classical sense. It's not a medium tank. Obviously, definitely not a light tank or a TD you could possibly play as a td given the big gun it has but the pen numbers are dreadful the muzzle velocity means sniping is difficult and he can't even play it as a hevium because if you take um a classic hevium like its own in its own tier the isa um it doesn't have the armor profile that allows you to really be effective um at playing as a hevium um, and also its reload is so long i mean that you know you can't really play it effectively as a hevium so what can you do with it well i mean this is the problem and this is why i think so many players struggle with this tank it doesn't really have anything it's particularly good at now what i try to do when i'm playing this tank is go to a part of the map where i can try to get hold down and uh, because if you can just expose the turret you will bounce shots and um, I try to then utilize the gun to uh, put some damage in for my team um, but it's not always easy guys and there's no shame in not being good with this tank this tank is not good um, it's not good at all um, it was, wasn't good when it came out right for starters right but since then it's been power creeped by so many things like the missile tanks the buff to the K91 makes it a far superior tank. Just think about it in comparison to the K91. And I think it's a good, relevant comparison because the K91 is a premium tier 9 heavy tank, also in the shops right now, and it's the same price. The K91 has better pen on a 100mm gun than this has on a 152mm gun. The K91 has almost, it's only two seconds difference, almost the same reload as this tank has for just one shell and that's why it's just so poor you know you can't compare it to the k91 at all the k is far superior tank and if you're stuck between which one to buy the k91 all day long you can see look you can get bounces as i did there when it hits a turret but then once he puts it into the um side of the tank it goes straight through um, but you can see why what I was trying to do here why I'm trying to get into the terrain where I can get my hull down I got two bounces there uh, when I could have been penned three times you can see look at the reload and if you're wondering why this BC comes up on me like this 
he thinks that um, he is definitely going to catch me on the reload um, and many tanks um, and his players who are experienced um, and have played this tank before know that once you fire there's a lifetime before you can fire again and um, they just push onto you because they know there's nothing you can do um, and again that's one of the reasons why this tank is so ineffective one of the other problems I have is I don't really like playing tanks with long reloads um, particularly if it's not a TD and the reason for that is as follows um, you ha you will hear some people say well if you've got let's say uh, a 12 second reload and you do uh, 600 damage right and you've got another tank with a six second reload that does 300 damage they say okay well they have the same dpm right because you have, every 12 seconds you do um uh, 600 damage but that's not really true because if you miss a shot with the tank with the slower reload you only have to wait six seconds before you can fire again also and this is something which is often overlooked um, by Blitz players and also sometimes by YouTubers as well from some of the um, videos I've seen. And it's game interaction or game influence. So what do I mean by that? Well, it means um, the time, every time you fire a round, you can actively participate and engage in the game, right? Um, and if you have a long, long period in between firing rounds, it means that your active engagement in the game is much, much less. So that also means, for example, that you can't do things like um, tactical damage. What do I mean by tactical damage? Well, you find that good blitz players um, often, particularly when they're in fast moving tags, often use a round to, for tactical damage. That is damage that may not necessarily do damage points to the enemy, but blows modules or is does attack so achieves some tactical objective. So what do I mean by that? Well, it can be, for example, firing around to track an enemy. You know that you're going to track him. You may or may not do damage points. Sometimes the track absorbs it, but you want to track him in one position, either for you to get into a, around him, or for your allies to fire around into him. You want to do it again, perhaps, to perma-track him, to use both his kits up, keep him in locked-in position, so you can get around him, circle of death, or allow uh, your um, allies to take him out on your behalf. Doesn't really matter which, right? Um, you, another example is that firing a shot on spec. So, for example, firing a shot on spec into a bush to see if there's a rim borsig or another um, TD there. You know, um, firing a shot to light up the enemy, give away your position to see who else who you light up as well for spawning purposes. All these things are tactical things, tactical aspects of the game uh, where you fire rounds, not necessarily to do damage. If you do damage, great. But it's to gain some tactical advantage you can do that you can fire a shot on spec if you've got a three or four second reload or a six second reload up a higher tier you can't do that if you've got almost a, a 16 second reload it's just not possible because then you've got to wait for so long before you can engage in the game again so you can't take speculative shots and you can't fire shots to do tactical damage and that's another huge disadvantage of this tank and um, so basically you have to make every shot count and um, but that's not always possible because the gun handling is so goddamn fucking awful. Now, we're going to have a look at the mastery game here um, that I did in this, I think, a couple of months ago. It, I mean, you know, so again, it goes back to my premise that you, you can play well in any tank, right? You can have a good game in any tank. That's true. Um, but the problem is that it's much, much more difficult than this tank. It is just not a good tank. Um, everything about it is poor it has nothing it excels at and the other problem it has is that um, its gun handling is just horrendous you know the G index which we calculated and the G index for those of you who haven't seen the advanced blitz guide that we have on channel um, with um, the information about calculating G index basically it's the uh, dispersion squared divided into the muzzle velocity and that kind of gives you a general gun handling index which allows you to directly compare tanks formula i created uh, just for just for you guys just for this channel um so 
This has a gun index of around 12,000, which basically means it has tier 6 gun handling. So you've got tier 6 gun handling on a tier 9 tank. And that's just not my opinion, that's basic mathematics, right? So you can't argue with the mathematical formula. It's the same for every tank. So this tank just has god-awful gun handling, terrible reload, um, and poor DPM, and no real armor per se, except on the turret. So it's not really, really good at anything, you know? Um, and that's what I think makes it so difficult to play. It doesn't really play into, um, you saw there, by the way, it's um, max roll with the APCR 700, which is not bad, of course. But you've got a long, long time to wait until you can fire again. And you'll see a couple of occasions in this game where with a different tank I could have um, you know, been far more effective with a slower reload time, but I just couldn't, um, you know, particularly towards the end of this game uh, when I'm in a 2v1 situation, I just could not um, get the, um, uh, sorry, 1v1 situation, you see, I just couldn't get the reload. You can see here, um, you can snap off shots in this tank at close range, but once you go to higher ranges because of that dreadful muzzle velocity for its tier, um, you are going to suffer. I mean, this has less muzzle velocity than the VK2801 in tier, in tier 6. And you're kind of thinking, okay, why? Uh, why is that, right? Nice tracking shot here, by the, way, by the way, guys. For those of you experienced, you know what a tracking shot is. But those of you who are not, this is what a tracking shot is. You track the enemy when you don't have a shot till you do have a shot. Snap one off. Um, and that actually shot there I like, probably wins this game for us or certainly makes the win possible now now we're gonna have a look at the poor gun handling in action so there's two shots coming up here on the object 704 one pens APCR and often what I do is in situations like this when I want to confirm the kill shot I often switch up to my Pramo um, I don't like heat as a Pramo I have to say I much prefer having AP and APCR as my loadouts um, but I go here and I just think, okay, and fire, and you're just going to see um, the really patchy gun handling here. Um, you can see, I slow right down, so you can see the shot actually where it hits. You can see the impact uh, where it hits, and it doesn't go through. Um, and again, like, okay, and again, it, it, heat's not supposed to bounce, right? So it should have gone straight through. Um, there's no mathematical reason for it not going through, it's just RNG. I have to clear off that object, um, can't let the BC come up behind me, so I had to take a hit to do that. Um, thankfully the BC is on a reload um, after he fires this shot into me, so I push onto him, which is really the only thing I do, I can't let him get in behind me, um, my maneuverability is nothing like his. Now he's trying to get out of here, I try to um, track him by ramming him, doesn't work, and you can see here, look at this, it's so frustrating with this gun. It's reload is so long, I couldn't get that final kill shot into him. What I decide to do is here, I can't let him dictate play, so I'm going to push onto him while I know where he is. Um, and I'm going to take a hit and hope I get a low um, RNG, and I do, and I'm going to clear him off. And that delivers the mastery game. But you can see there, you know, there was a lot of luck involved there for me as well. Um, and because this tank's gun handling is just so crap, it's reload, everything about it is just so crap that it makes it very difficult for you to influence the game. You saw there are a couple of occasions where I could have really um, had a, a better game and helped my teammates if I was able to do something, but the reload in this tank is just so awful. I don't understand why Wargaming don't do something about this. They're charging you money, okay? I know it's a lot cheaper than it was when it came out first, but they're charging like 17 euros. And some people, that's a lot of money. They're charging 17 euros for a premium tank. And there's nothing premium about it. Most, in fact, nearly all tech line tanks are better than it. And um, compared to other premiums, it just sucks. I mean, the T55A and the K91 are in store right now for the same price. Either one of them is miles better, and I would definitely recommend it. So unless you have all of the tanks and you just want to add this to your collection, I wouldn't recommend it, guys, because honestly, it just sucks. And I don't understand why more games just leave it sitting there at, with such suckage. You know, I mean, it just it just seems crazy. But anyway, let's have a recap um, on the key points. So it's a weak tank, has too many bad points, too many things it's just not good at, as we've discussed in the, in the video. 
Um, a 152 millimeter gun is just doesn't make sense. It's a terrible gun system, terrible pen, terrible reload, terrible gun handling. That G index is 12,000, which basically gives a tier six gun handling. I mean, you know, if you're buying a tier nine premium, you don't expect it to have the same gun handling as a tier six tech line tank, right? Weak pen, which there's no explanation for with a 152 millimeter gun, none whatsoever. You know, almost a 16 second reload when you're using calibrated shells, which you have to do by the way, because the pen is so awful anyway. It gives you awful DPM. It does have a great power to weight ratio for a heavy, um, and it's good at traverse, but you can't really play it as a hevium. It has great turn armor, which makes a good fall down, but it doesn't have the um, the gun depression to allow you to really play that effectively. Gun alignment is just okay, it's nothing special, right? Six degrees gun depression, 15 degrees of ele elevation, just makes it run of the mill and has poor armor on the hull. The hull is just awful. It's paper thin for tier nine when you consider the guns you're up against. Muzzle velocity is also awful, which makes sitting at the back and sniping difficult. Um, uh, the gun handling index also doesn't really lend for this. Dispersion is, is high, muzzle velocity is low. And overall, I would just pass in this tank. You won't enjoy it. Unless you have all the tier nine premiums already and you just want to add this to your collection, then of course, by all means, go for it. Um, but you know what, we'll just give it a pass um, if I were you guys. And nothing special, and nothing waiting for you, but a lot of frustration. So cheers much, thanks for watching. I hope you found it useful, I hope you found it enjoyable. And I guess all remains for me to say is, pants off.